This video is sponsored by Omaze, a company that works with people like me to raise money for nonprofits. Go to omaze.com slash Adam and make a contribution to support the James Beard Foundation. Donate $10 and you'll be entered to win a trip, an amazing food and art tour of Mexico City. More on that later. In the Great Corn vs. Flour Tortilla War, a pivotal episode occurred in 1952, when a guy named Glenn Bell opened a hamburger and hot dog stand in San Bernardino, California. He conveniently opened up his stand across the street from a Mexican restaurant. That's Gustavo Arellano, journalist with the Los Angeles Times and author of the book Taco USA, How Mexican Food Conquered America. Every night after he'd uh, close down, he'd go across the street to the Mexican restaurant, order their hard shell tacos, then go back to his restaurant and try to decipher how to make these tacos. Eventually, the owners of the restaurant, they go up to him and say, look, we know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get our recipe. But instead of doing a mockery out of our food, let us just show you. We'll come, come into the kitchen and we'll help you out. Glenn Bell admits to this story in his 2010 authorized biography, Taco Titan. Some super nice Mexican-American cooks showed this clueless white guy how to make their tacos. Then he turned around and sold their idea in his chain of restaurants that would become Taco Bell. He used his social and economic privilege to make himself extremely wealthy with their food. Bell never publicly named the restaurant in that story, never gave him credit. A lot of people naturally view this story as a textbook case of cultural appropriation. There is a pretty strong counter-argument to that, which we shall return to at the end. For now, let's just take note of something that we can learn from the Taco Bell menu. Taco Bell sells hard-shell corn tortillas, they call them crunchy tacos. They sell soft-shell wheat tortillas, they just call them soft tacos. But Taco Bell, by far the largest nominally Mexican chain of restaurants in the United States, does not sell these. They do not sell soft corn tacos. And why not, when the soft-shell corn tortilla is the original tortilla, originating in pre-Columbian America? Wheat didn't even grow in this hemisphere until European colonialists brought it over. Well, well, I have a theory that there are certain food textures that it can be particularly hard to love if you didn't grow up eating them. In Japanese cuisine, for example, there are a lot of soft, kind of wet, kind of gelatinous textures that to Western palates can often come off as slimy. In the case of corn tortillas, soft corn tortillas, the texture is mealy, which I'll admit is kind of tough for even me to handle, even though I really prefer the earthy, stronger flavor of corn tortillas. This purely textural hang-up is totally obviated if you chuck the tortilla into a deep fryer, which is how we get tortilla chips chips and hard shell tacos. White people love a fried corn tortilla, as you can observe in any great classic Mexican-American restaurant like this one, Margarita's here in Macon, Georgia. I love that place. And you can get soft corn tacos there too, but nonetheless there exists a stereotype that corn tortillas are the real deal, while wheat or flour tortillas are for gringos. One of the many problems with stereotypes is that even when they're kind of true, they leave out crucial parts of the story. In this case, the stereotype omits the fact that flour tortillas are also from Mexico. What we do know, though, is that flour tortillas originated in northern Mexico. That's still where in Mexico to this day uh, flour tortillas predominate. That's also why for decades flour tortillas have always outsold corn tortillas in the United States because those were the original tortillas that Americans were used to just because of the proximity to the border. Indeed, if we ever want to think about why certain people eat certain things, the first thing to consider is what grows where they live. Wheat grows better than corn in northern Mexico, hence wheat flour tortillas. Only white people eat tortillas? Go talk to the people in Sonora. Go talk to the people in uh, Nuevo León and Chihuahua in the borderlands. Go talk to the uh, Tex-Mex folks who have been right there on the border for generations, and for them, flour tortillas is what they grew up on. They totally speak Spanish. They look like you and I. Flour tortillas, our tradition, except for some people, for a lot of Mexicans, until recently, in Mexico, they did not grow up with flour tortillas. So they see it, they immediately think, oh, it must be a Tex-Mex abomination. A lot of Mexicans, they still feel very wrong by Americans and what Americans do to Mexican culture. So it's obvious to me why they would have such a, such a defensive posture. And it is with all due sensitivity to those very real and, in my view, very legitimate grievances that I will nonetheless now gingerly make the argument that there is another reason why wheat tortillas have become so popular. 
And it's the same reason why wheat breads have become popular almost everywhere in the world. It's not purely a legacy of European colonialism. It's all about that gluten, those proteins in wheat that make wheat doughs stretchy. No other cereal crop has nearly as much gluten as wheat, and gluten makes breads pliable. I can bend this flour tortilla back and forth as much as I want. I really have to work to make it break. Whereas this corn tortilla crumbles very easily. It's brittle because it's gluten-free, and it is therefore structurally incapable of wrapping foods as securely as a flour tortilla can. Here is a San Francisco or Mission-style burrito, one of my top 10 favorite things to eat. My favorite one comes from Laughing Planet in Bloomington, Indiana. This sadly is not that. But anyway, those folded ends just would not be physically possible with a corn tortilla. Flour tortillas have another, dare I say, intrinsic advantage, which is that they're way easier to make. Corn tortillas are tough. You gotta get corn and nixtamalize it, which means treating it with an alkali like calcium hydroxide, lime. The resulting flour, called masa harina, is mixed with water to make a dough that is very delicate, because again, no gluten in corn. It's crumbly. Successfully cooking one of these takes some special gear and a practiced hand. Corn tortillas are very, very hard to make. Right. Flour tortillas, you get flour, you get some water, you get some lard, maybe baking powder if you're from Texas. You mix it up, pat them out, and there you go. Now, corn tortillas have some intrinsic advantages health-wise, at least when it comes to the diets of first world peoples who generally eat too many calories. The corn tortilla is a lower calorie product. It's also rich in magnesium, which is a mineral that a lot of people don't get enough of. But the problem is, because corn tortillas are so delicate, lots of taquerias double them up to make them more sturdy, thus negating the whole calorie advantage because you're eating more tortilla. I don't know, maybe we're overthinking this. Gustavo Arellano has eaten more tacos of varying kinds than any human being alive, and he has a pretty simple philosophy. If it's good, why not? Why not? So, can you make ta can you fry flour tortillas? In Pueblo, Colorado, they do, and they make chicken tacos out of them. Can you make burritos out of uh, corn tortillas? It's a little bit hard, but in Ventura County, they do have something called corn burritos. They just roll up these really thin corn tortillas and make teeny tiny burritos out of them, that, which are pretty good. So me personally, I like flour tortillas for quesadillas because I love quesadillas. If I love a good corn tortilla, if I just want to roll something up, but it really, really depends. I cannot pick one or the other. Certainly, I'd agree that nobody should be shamed for liking the food that they like to eat. But that's different from cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation is when, say, I, a member of a group that has marginalized and exploited and perhaps even conquered your group, comes along over to your group and says, hmm, that thing that you have, I like that and I'm gonna take it. And then I use my unjustly acquired social and economic advantages to maybe sell that thing for a lot of money in a way that you couldn't because you're not as privileged. Or maybe I just misrepresent that thing to the world, and everybody believes me because I've got a bigger megaphone than you. That's what makes appropriation different from other kinds of cultural exchange. Which leads us back to Glenn Bell. Glenn Bell never named the Mexican restaurant where he learned to make hard shell tacos. But Gustavo Arellano figured it out and wrote about it in his book. Turns out it was a place called Meat La Cafe in San Bernardino, and it's still there. Arellano went there and interviewed Irma Montano, whose late father-in-law taught Glenn Bell how to make the tacos that made him rich. And what did she say? She said, that son of a bitch gringo cheated my family. He plundered our cultural treasures and he commodified them. Oh wait, no, that's actually not at all what she said. What she actually said is, good for him. He was a self-starter, and he did push those tacos. And there you go. Like I said, I think that cultural appropriation is a real and bad thing, but in this instance, I think that Irma Montano's opinion matters way more than mine. Now, I hope that we just did a little bit to promote the kind of culinary cross-cultural understanding that the James Beard Foundation works to promote. You may know the James Beard Awards that they give out to chefs. They also give out scholarships and run other programs to promote the culinary arts and to help developing talent. It's a great organization that you can support right now by going to omaze.com slash Adam. Donate $10 and you're entered to win an ultimate food and art tour of Mexico City. You and a friend will get flights, hotel, and even a little bit of walking around 
around money. If you win this, I will be very happy for you, but I will also be furious because there's no other country on earth that I would rather eat my way through. I'm on record as saying as much in this earlier video. Um, okay. You can travel to one country for an all you can eat tour. Where do you go? Probably Mexico would be my first choice. So for your chance to win that food and art tour of Mexico City, go to omaze.com slash Adam and enter now. Donate $10 to support the James Beard Foundation. Thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this video. I'm now going to eat about a thousand tacos.